Hey everybody, TBG Hunter here, and welcome back to more Let's Play from Mischief Makers. Last time, we got introduced to, well, Marina, the Prof, and Planet Clanter itself. We had the Prof sadly get taken away by the evil Empire, which, you know, Empires in, like, all forms of fiction have always been given a bad rap. It's time for Empires to be reimagined as the good guys for once. But, th sadly, this isn't the game for it. Instead, we're going to be continuing on with the second half of Planet Clancer, where we see the rise of the man, the myth, the legend, Blockman. Hey, Marina, I was expecting you. It's me, Terran, from Nepton Village. Do you remember my sister? She's gone. Where could she be? Please help me find her, Marina. Hey, don't panic. I'll find your sister. Don't worry. Actually, I'm looking for the prof too. Luckily, he's strong and he's healthy for his age. Look, also, look at that innocent smile of her. She, that's why Marina's great. Yeah, shake me, shake me hard. Grab me and shake me, shake me and wake in my fighting spirits. There is block man blood and running through my body. It's the blood of heroes. Well, that actually kind of sort of escalated quickly. Wow. Uh, Terran, you okay? You seem kind of... spherical now. Alright, well, you said shake him. And even though I didn't shake him, he's turned into the man, the myth, the legend, block man. So, yeah, this is basically the gimmick of this level. We gotta basically ride Terran throughout the entire this level and basically just one-shot pretty much anything that tries to get in our path. We can, we can do some major splits here, I gotta say, for... Someone very blockish. He's pretty limber. Also, we can assert our dominance throughout the level as well. And we can actually do a little bit of some jumping jacks while we are we are at it. So, let's just keep moving. Break anything that's in our path. We are a force to be reckoned with. Even these innocent clanters. Although, since they are blue, they obviously have to be the evil empire troops. Hey, I don't make the rules, or maybe they're just innocent villagers that are getting caught up in our wave of destruction, seeing as how this guy is just basically living his life in his house. See ya! Oh, what's that? Oh, you're Cyan? Later. Oh, he's red. He's gotta be good, right? Nope, maybe we truly are the villain, and that other Marina was the real Marina to be... That uh, was the real Marina all along. Just grab all the gems while we're here. We've pretty much cornered the market on red gems. One of the biggest issues I will say that this game does have is it gets pretty easy around the start. It's not until like the third, maybe fourth area of the game does it actually provide a bit of a challenge. I'm just going to sit here for a while and just watch the pretty fireworks. See ya. Oh no, I've been blown up! Will this destruction ever cease? No, it will not. Darren, want to give me a hand? And I think I might have missed... Uh, yep, I definitely missed out on the gold gem. So, a thing I'm going to do in this game, just to keep things simple, we're going to continue on through the game. And after we finish up each world, I'll go back and basically just fast cut to um, the locations of the gems, how to get them, and, well, me actually getting them. So, unfortunately, no gold gem for the first time around. Instead, we're going to warm up. Hey, I don't make up these names. Let's water the flowers. Let's cover the desert in beautiful flowers. Hey, what are you doing here? This is my spot. Get out of here at once! Hey, this desert d doesn't belong to anyone. I can be anywhere I want to. Shut up, or I'll really beat you up. I'm Marina, the Ultra Intergalactic Cybot G. Stop bullying this little girl. Huh? Are you challenging me? I accept your challenge. Bring it on, Marina. So yes, introducing one of the first of many mini bosses of this game. And I'm gonna be honest here, he's an absolute joke. 
But then again, what what do you get when you have to fight something with no arms? Uh, come on, come look at this guy. Look at him. Look at look at how he twirls around in my hand. All right, shake him. Get ourselves a gold gem for this area. That's usually the way things go uh, for mini bosses. Is like give them a good shake, and they're usually the ones carrying the gold gems. I think one of them you actually have to beat the boss without taking any damage, which. For what it is, I think it's really easy to do. I'm just gonna just toss him up like a pizza pie. Like I said, he's an absolute joke. All right, and now to combo him all to oblivion. It takes a good amount of hits to take him out. He can also breathe fire, and he's actually kind of aggressive in some of his attacks. But one of the more fun things to do with him is... Oh yeah, he can also charge around. If we jump up here where Celis is, or Celise, Oh, he rolls around at the speed of sound. Excuse me. I didn't think he actually could hit me up there. Or maybe not. Alright, fine. Hey, you're coming with me. Go on, it's time to face your fears. <laughs> Alright, I wasn't planning on killing him with the little girl, but you know what? That's... Probably one of the best outcomes we could have for this fight. Yeah, you deserve that, Sun Marina. I need, I need this for saving your butt. Thank you for your generous donation. Let's go! I said, let's go! Alright, fine. Don't grab the warp gate. See if I care. Alright, two minutes, four seconds. If I hadn't been screwing around, just tossing around like a pizza, then we probably would have gone to A rank in that mission. But, whatever. Time to head back to Neptune. Because there is a crisis afoot. Geold! Please tell everyone to search for Selyse. Calm? Wait, was it? Calm down! We have to protect the village. Don't go outside! Besides, Marina will return Selyse to me. I can feel it. Great Scott, G Oh, wait, that's him. Great Scott, Geold! Strange spur clancers are attacking us! What? Hey, kid! Take the other kids to the safe area. So, this is the royal family's treasure. I'm taking all the treasure with me. When the game's away, the villains will play. Go back to where you came from. Hey, look who's talking. You've lived long enough, old man. Your time is up. There he goes. Terran, I've brought the lease back as promised. Now, let me handle this joker. <clears throat> Alright, so this is actually the first time we get into Clancer fights. Basically, just throw them around like the ragdolls that they are. One well, of the best things to do for this is to throw the giant warrior Clancer around. Terran can actually hold himself quite well against them because he's one of the only things that can actually punch in this game. Also, Terran? Terran, you okay? Terran, will you get out of my way and let me throw these fools? I'm crying out loud. If you die to this little guy, I'm going to laugh my ass off. Hey, big guy, come here. Be a force to be reckoned with. The way to get the gold gem in there, because this is actually the same gold gem from the very first level of the game, we have to actually win this fight without either Terran or this uh, warrior Clancer dying, because they can actually be defeated in this fight. Nice throw. Oh, we did it. Nice. And with that, we are rewarded with all the gems. We get the red gem, blue gem, green gem, and the gold gem. Thanks for the help, guys, and thanks for the nice little workout. Still got a B rank, though. I think to get the A rank, we had to go and beat that mission in under a minute. Or maybe a minute and under it. But it's time to go west, John Marina. Back to the desert we go. Remember that the game's basic techniques are to grab, shake, and throw. You can even catch a laser or an enemy bullet. Try grabbing everything. That's right, if anyone shoots at you with a gun, just grab the bullet. 
After grabbing something, try shaking it to see what happens. Which, yeah. Although these kind of look more like they're shooting ping pongs at me instead. I don't know why these little like tank things have cat faces on them. But we get we get the little assault rifle it carries around. Just blo shoot fools left and right. If we shake the gun, it becomes a spread shot from Contra. So pretty good. Head up here. And there's nothing. I thought there was. I thought there was a way to get to the gold gem because I remember there was a gold gem location like at the very start of the level. Hmm, guess I was wrong. Oh, nice grenade! Ow, idiot. Got a couple of desperados around here. Need to take care of these fools. This guy up here is a bit of a boss, as you can see by the fact that he's the only one with a gun for an arm. Of course, he's an absolute pushover. Ow. But these guys, on the other hand, are kind of getting to be a bit of a nuisance. Damn it. I think if we were able to grab three of those in a row, then we'd actually get, like, a blue gem from them. Man, how much punishment can this guy take? There we go. Oh, wow, this guy was loaded. No wonder he was sticking around afterwards. Oh, that's all the green gems you got, buddy? That's it? You're stumping out on me? Fine. Let's see, up here. Oh, wait, I remember. We actually need to grab ourselves a bomb. Jump up here, not get hit by one of the spike balls, and we need to make our way up there because that leads to where the gold gem is. Ah, damn it. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna tank some hits from these spike bombs. Nope, that is to some red gems. I think the right way was for the gold gem. Ow. Oh, we need two clam bombs as well. Three, and I just screw that up. All right, you know what? The hell with it. Thankfully, these uh, spike balls do not respawn, so we're just going to take out as many as we can. Grab ourselves another clam bomb. Head back over here. Jump up here. Two, three. Dodge that one and get ourselves another clam bomb because we missed out on the second pillar. All right. There we go. Now, if we can actually make this jump, we can now officially get ourselves the gold gem. And also, this really weird and out of place, like, Clancer cactus. Clantus? I don't know. Also, this. It's really weird how there's just, like, this thing over here. You'd figure that they would have hidden, like, maybe, like, a little secret, like maybe a green gem back there or something, but uh, honestly, there's nothing on that other side, unless you want like a little extra challenge to get get into the warp gate from the far side of the house. Which, you know, being me, I have to. Now no one will ever know. And we're only back to do it good. But we still haven't passed our five-minute mark, so I'm happy with it. All right, it's time for Volcano! I guess you could say this is sort of the pseudo-boss of Clan Clan Plant Clancer. It, although it's more of just avoid this thing's artillery strikes against you and less fighting it. Jump up here, head up here real quick. Head over here. Don't get hit. And here's the gold gem I was thinking of from the last level. Ow. Oh, right. I think I need to actually be up here instead. Nope. Not 
this time. Ow. Hey, think maybe too many things are going on on the screen right now. Unless the game decides to freeze up on us. I'll be right back. Yeah! Don't ask me why this volcano is trying to murder me, or why it somehow came alive by the power of lightning. I'm just gonna assume space bats. Space bats use their space magic to bring this volcano to a life. But, I might as well get into a, something I was talking about uh, last video, and that is the reason behind uh, my great love for this game. You know, if I can stop getting hit by flaming boulders, and spikes, and frames dying, and not screwing up my runs as well. So, my history with this game is the fact that around the time this game came out, so I was like, I think it was like five at the time, or it was maybe like a couple years later. Um, my father, he took me out and let me pick out two games. It was the first time I was ever allowed to pick out like a game for myself, and he said, um, just pick your choice. One of which was Wave Race 64, and the other was this game. And while I do love Wave Race, it was a really fun game, and it looked really nice for its time, and nice, we got a B rank, so we got very good. This game, I don't know why, but the art style and the characters just made me fall in love with it more. I, I loved it even more than Mario 64, Banjo-Kazooie, and even to a degree, Majora's Mask. Majora's Mask creeped me out to no end as a kid, and it kind of turned me off in some of the areas of it. But this game, it just had such an artistic charm to it for me. Sun head back to Blockman, though. Alright, so back in Blockman Rises, the location of the gold gem is actually with this gold brownish grenade clancer. Just need to get over to him. He throws grenades pretty fast, faster than the normal two, so th that little difference is what makes you think that, oh, this guy's different, so he has to have the gold gem. Let's grab this fool, shake him, and get ourselves the gold gem. There we go, and now it's time to head off to area two of the game. All right, and that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Next time on Mischief Makers, we're going to delve headfirst into Megan Shrine. And from the looks of things, the game's probably going to turn up the heat on us when we get there. All right, so thank you all so much for watching once again, and I will see you next time. Later.